Let's go to Colorado. It would appear that the police officers there uh, were filled with free time and had no criminal activity, so the state decided to legalize marijuana. <laughs> Historically, if a teenager would approach the pastor or the youth pastor and ask if marijuana is a sin, we could simply respond, it's illegal, so don't do it. Well, now with Washington soon becoming a practicing state, four more states, Washington, D.C., taking a look at legislation, it would appear that marijuana legalization is coming perhaps to all states. Is smoking pot a sin? Yes or no? <laughs> On that one, I'll, I'll give you a yes. Yes, okay. Dr. Mueller. And I'll let you, I'll let you tell us why, because what I'd like you to do is give me a yes or no, and then I want you to give me your theological case for that. At the same time? No. <laughs> yes. It's a sin. It's a sin. Mark? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Tom? Yes. Steve? Yes. Dr. McCarthy? Yes, absolutely build a theological case because I'm not aware of a Bible verse that says you should not smoke a big fat doobie. <laughs> right? There's no Bible verse that says that. So what, how do you build the case? Todd, I, Paul, I, Paul says all things are lawful but I will not be brought under the power of any. And the answer to the question is, you know, people say, well, it's no different than drinking alcohol. You can drink alcohol and not have your mind altered. You can't smoke a joint without having your mind altered. That's the purpose of it. You've yielded up control to an external force that's been taken internal. It, is, it has the sole purpose to alter your consciousness, to diminish your responsibility, to diminish your accountability, to diminish you at every level of thinking, which then diminishes you at every level of function. It has no other purpose. Uh, it, it's, it's compared to drinking, but it's not the same. Because you can, you know, have a glass of wine at dinner and it doesn't alter your consciousness at all. But when you smoke a joint, that is the sole purpose of doing that. And, and that then yields up control uh, to, or I should say, it releases your self-control and that's always a sin. Right? Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I think that's the, that's the very verse of, uh, that I thought of, uh, uh, along with the fact that the scripture just routinely through throughout, pervasively, condemns intoxication. Yeah. Uh, the, it, 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 where it doesn't roundly condemn, obviously, uh, uh, what it would classify as wine and, and other things, uh, when you start to put it into context, you realize what's being discussed there, even the biblical etymology, look at the context. Uh, the warnings against intoxication mean that whatever you may drink lawfully and enjoy lawfully, and Paul would say to Timothy, is good for your health, is not something that leads to intoxication. Intoxication is itself a big problem. Christianity Today has an editorial out on this this week, uh, suggesting that it would not be it, that, it, that, that Christian freedom should extend to the freedom to smoke marijuana, but Christian judgment should extend to, to not doing that. I, I think the big problem is one of the arguments there That's is that uh, is that whatever God gives us is good. You know, you, we don't condemn any good thing. But God didn't give us a marijuana plant and say, "Roll this up and smoke it." In other words, God's <laughs> God's purpose to give us something for its intended end is good. Uh, you know, it's, it's just hard to, it's, it's hard to justify that. Colorado's new tourism motto, by the way, is come to Colorado, you'll forget to leave. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, <laughs> all right, yeah, and none of us will know whether to applaud this or to give a deep sigh. How's about the Girl Scout cookie salesperson, the little girl, selling Girl Scout cookies outside of the pot store in Denver? Part of you wants to go, wow, and the other part wants to go, well, that's brilliant. <laughs> Who else wants well, Girl Scout cookies more? Before, <laughs> before the legalization of so-called recreational marijuana, they had medical marijuana right. in Colorado. And uh, even, even then, there were more marijuana distributorships in Denver than Starbucks and McDonald's combined. Wow. And, and that tells you a great deal where this is going. By the way, your governor... Uh, suggested in recent days that it might not be smart for the entire state of California to be stoned because it could have a bad impact on the economy. 
But he went on and said, but we have medical marijuana, which is about the same thing. And I just want to tell you that I, I, I was, some years ago, when I was here for this conference, I was having dinner in Santa Monica, and there was a stand set up with someone who I guess is an MD sitting behind it, and you could come and say, I have a hangnail, and get a prescription for medical marijuana. Yeah, then let me ask this question. We were all assuming we're talking about recreational use, medicinal use of marijuana. Am I opposed to that as a Christian? I want to suggest you shouldn't be opposed to medical marijuana any more than you should be uh, opposed to medical penicillin. Medical penicillin isn't available at Santa Monica Beach and a pier from a guy with a beard and a tie-dye t-shirt. <laughs> so if, 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 if it is being handled by the medical establishment according to medical means of the American Medical Association, which, by the way, condemns the use of marijuana in this way, in other words, if it's regulated, we, we, we wouldn't want half the stuff sold at the pharmacy available for any kind of use you could just go get at the pier and 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 so much of the talk about medical marijuana is an emotivist camouflage of the real issue and your governor admitted that this week god bless governor moonbeam <laughs> <laughs> you never thought you'd say that sentence did you uh, in that could sense, we in that okay. sense.